Welcome back and in today's video we're going to do the final of four, the left rear. So we've done a small video case study here on uh, the four corners, kind of broke them down and did each corner individually and today's video is the left rear. So let's get started but before we do let's cover a little business here first. Um, if you could uh, subscribe like and hit the notification bell uh, that way when we do a video you'll be notified help us to grow the channel help us to share our information with others um, but just help do your part in helping out so if you could share the videos or like or uh, you know subscribe to our channel it you know it just helps us uh, helps us to stay motivated we know people are watching and are interested in what we're doing we'll keep doing it Today's video is left rear, okay? And as we did the others, we'll start the left rear with the spring, okay? And we're gonna cover two different types of springs. Uh, in, in, in our case study, we've been doing a US or AB mod. Uh, so in this scenario, we're gonna do a left rear of a 125, okay? So the two left rears we'll do is the 125 and a um, 175. So we're going to start with the 125. Uh, the 125, we sell a 16 inch spring because INC rules. Uh, a 125 18 might be the best of the scenarios in which you can have um, because as the spring, the, the, the basic rule of a preloaded spring in the left rear and a 125 that's going to be our preloaded spring. Uh, and the basic rule is the softer it gets, the more grip it makes. But there's a certain amount of, you know, stability in a, in a 100 or 125. So watch our video about lecture springs. Um, this will explain how that preloaded spring really works. But if you're going to do a softer spring, like a 80... 50, 80, 75, 100, 125, then it needs to be preloaded at full hike. If you're doing, uh, you know, 150, don't preload it. Guys are preloading 150 at 175, 200, then run your car based on bite and a ride height. So st standard stuff there. Ride height, you need to determine a ride height, okay? If you're running a preloaded spring, set your car up right front, left front, right rear with a 175 spring in it. This allows these corners to be correct when you're setting them up. Do not set your car up with left rear preload spring in the car because it will change dynamically at static. It'll put dynamic load in the car and change your right height settings and your right rear load settings at static okay so these measurements need to be taken at static and we don't need the left rear all jacked up or laid down so put a 175 in in our B mod case we're going to put it on a slider we're going to put it in the car we're going to set our right height and when we're done we're going to hang it on the wall because it's a tool now that's our setup tool for the left rear okay um, spring rate in this case we're doing a 125 ride height we're going to set ride heights use your uh chassis re recommend recommendations for that ride height uh where to set it and how to set it and we get that done wheel offset we're going to be on a two inch on a wheel offset we're going to line our left side tires up we're going to be on a 16 inch center rear end uh, so a two inch wheel offset wheel load Okay, wheel load will come in the car, will be an extended. So the best way to get extended load in the car is to jack the car up under the seat, you know, kind of jack the car up, get the left rear off the ground, and set your wheel load, um, your center to center distance where you want it. So this is where you're going to, you know, your chain slack. We're going to go ahead and jump chain slack in here. This is where you're going to set your chain slack, okay? Um, if you set your if you set your extended load center to center number your chain slack 
and you look at the car and go, hey, that didn't look right. You know, if like I need to extend it out, well then you may need to extend it out. Okay, so get the car, make sure it looks right. You know, it's going to be in that 23 and a half, 24 and a half, 25 inch number range. You may have to put a shock extension on the shock. You may have to put a shock extension on the slider. Um, but you're going to be in that range. Most of the time we, we're right in there around 23 and a half, 24. Um, set the chain. Set the chain so when the car is up on the bars and the car is moving forward, the chain doesn't have a lot of angle in it. Um, set the chain as far out as you can because that will allow um, for better adjustments. When the chain's in against the bell, a little adjustment makes a lot of adjustment at the tire. Uh, in some cases, I know this is like the best place for, to hang a chain uh, because it's easiest. Okay, not because it performs best. Uh, if you're going to stay on uh, a Pacific chassis builder and there's no, um, you know, no bars up there to hang the chain off of, start putting heat on him to get him in there, you know. Adding a little bar to hang the chain off of is not going to kill the car. We're adding weight to the left rear. Having a bar, one more little bar in there to hang a chain off of, that's piece pie. So uh, extended load and chain are together. We got the car up. We got our chain set. Now we're going to go in there with the tape measure. And we're going to measure our cup to cup. We're going to measure how much preload is on the spring. If you're... If you're on a slider and a 16 inch spring, you can pull the slider and take it off, extend it, put some turns in. The slider is eight threads per inch, okay? So divide that by the spring rate. That's how much spring you'll gain per turn. So if you wanna set, we're gonna set that spring at 180 to, 220, uh, to 250, okay? with our gold at about 225. That's where we're going to start out. Extended load at 225. If you find yourself having to run over 250 consistently, whatever it takes to make the car move forward on the racetrack, that's what we do. If we find ourselves consistently over 250, then we will lower the rear percent. If we find ourselves under 180, we will increase our rear percent. Okay. If we find our tire spinning, coming up off the corner, we'll increase our left rear weight. So um, extended load number that we're going to start with uh, on our 125 spring is going to be 225 pounds. Um, shock valving. Now, shock valving, and we are going to have to do something uh, with this in a shorter video, but Shock valving on the left rear. Uh, we have what's good for the car. We have what's good for the driver. Okay. If the driver, so our theory is the driver gets the car in the corner. The shock gets the car off the corner. Okay. If we're using the shock to hold the car up on entry or we need a shock to hold the car up on entry, it's telling us that we're not doing something right. Okay. Um, but and I've been pretty hard-headed about it, and I apologize for that. We've come to the conclusion, if the shock holding the car up gets the car in the corner better than the driver can, then it's a win-win. Okay? Regardless of what, is it, what it does to the car on exit, it's still a win-win. Because the car gets in better, gets off better. Okay? A car gets in crappy, gets off crappy. Okay? Um, that, is, that is how it works. So... Um, if you can't get the car in the corner, there's no shame in that game, then we'll build a stiffer left rear. So currently we're building two left rears, a left rear with bleed and a left rear with very little bleed. Okay. Um, if you need help getting the car, you want a left rear two. If you can manage the car on the throttle, you need a left rear one. Uh, the degree of valving in the left rear goes from like a 4350 to a 4550 so you can you can adjust high speed and low speed we do the low speed in a 40 a 50 a 60 a 75 
Okay, this increases the low speed value in the shock. Uh, we do them from 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, uh, and 600. And we've done them above that. But now we'll go back to a left rear two. And that shock's going to read like left rear two, uh, 400. Okay. In a drop test that we do, measuring resistance over distance. So we measure it by time, the resistance over a distance of five inches. A left rear one dash, say 5550 or 75550 will drop five inches in say nine uh, seconds or a little bit less. Okay, a left rear two, 400 will drop in about 20 seconds. So its stiffness to hold the car up is double. So uh, left rear one, if the driver can get the car in the corner, left rear two, if he needs help getting it in the corner. Okay, shock valving, when that, as you add compression to a left rear shock, it kills drive off corner. Okay, but if you can, if you can get the car in better, because you got a stiffer shock, then you can do whatever you got to do. You'll manage getting the car off the corner better. Okay, so so think about that on the left rear. Um, extended load will help hold the car up and may not need a stiffer shock. And we don't need to have a lot of extended load and a real stiff shock to combo together. Uh, it's just going to hurt the tire more. So... Um, Left rear video review, you know, we're spraying at 125, our ride height, our wheel offset at 2, a right, uh, 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 60 inch centered rear end, uh, extended load somewhere in that 23 and a half, 24 inch number, set between 180 and 250, and our set number we're going to start out is 225. Um, shock valving, uh, left rear one dash, say 4400 or 5400. That's a real good piece for a USRAB mod. Uh, uh, IMCA Sport Mod, a Northern Sport Mod, may need a little more uh, stiffness. Um, remember, these cars are tight, so putting a lot of tightness in the car, uh, making a lot of left rear in a car that already struggles because it's a three link car, the car does want to go forward, it makes good traction, it, you know, it wants to go down the straightaway. <clears throat> so that means it's going to struggle a little bit at turning. So adding left rear uh, load number or bite number to the car isn't always the answer. I know that's what we were taught. We were taught to go, go, go on the left rear, but it, it's not always the answer. So um, left rear, that about covers it for the left rear. Uh, watch all four videos. They, they've gone on a little longer than I'd, I'd like to see, but you know, somebody suggested a five minute video and I don't think that's physically possible. Uh, probably better for your viewing entertainment, but this is information. And, um, you know, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get it out, and I try to cover it in a way you can understand. So if you have comments or you have questions, comment them, because commenting is what we're supposed to do to help create a dialogue. This isn't me talking to a camera. This is me talking to you and you talking back to me. Okay, so comment in the videos, subscribe, like our videos, hit the notification bell, uh, help us out in that edit form. Go watch our, go watch, well, go watch some of our other videos, but go watch our uh, Let's Have Fun video uh, about commenting about what you guys would like to see. Okay, and understand no comment is stupid. Okay, we are not going to get on here and make fun of people. And people are not going to make fun. I'll just delete it. Okay. I'm looking for ideas. I'm looking for a dialogue. I'm looking for a conversation between people. Okay. The uh, future video I'd like to do is um, fundamentals. Uh, fundamentals of a race car. Fundamentals of a right front. Uh, fundamentals of drive versus turn. Fundamentals of the corner. Okay, uh, in some of our seminars, we do five minutes of the corner and it breaks the corner down into five minute increments and the car's rotating. The car's doing something different every five minutes. It'll make a great video 
may not be short, but it, it'll make a great video. So help us out. Subscribe. Um, if you got ideas, comment them on this video. Comment them on that video. Watch our videos. Uh, if, if you don't understand, call me. 620-326-3152. Go to our websites, full of information, uh, bsvgofast.com. There's a lot of tech, uh, there's blog, there's tech articles, there's uh, blog articles on the left rear, the left rear bypass, the left rear shock placement, the left rear shock valving. The left rear is a pretty important tool, and the right front's a pretty important tool, and we're going to be covering, you know, just more of it as we go. Uh, why we're talking about the right front? There's a video in there for valving and a video in there for forced traction. Um, they're, they're both about 10-15 minutes, so they're short videos. Um, go watch them. Uh, you know, understand what we got going on. So, as always, guys, God bless you. Uh, we look for you at the racetrack. If we're there and you see us there, come, come visit us. Come ask questions. Um, speed is what we're looking for. And we want to turn you all into winners. So come see us at the track.